How's it going everybody? It's Aparicio. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, go ahead and subscribe. I will be posting DaVinci Resolve videos every week. So today what we're going to be talking about is color management and color space transform. It can get a little bit deep and a little bit scary. We're going to be talking about pretty much the basics and by the end of this video, you will feel more comfortable about it. With that being said, let's get into some color management and color space transform. All right, so let's go to the color page. So we have footage from our Ari Amira. Then we have footage from Panasonic GH6, which features yours truly. Uh, so obviously we have a log clip that's shot in log. Let's start here. Let's click the settings on the bottom right and make sure you're in color management. And then as you can see, our color science is set to DaVinci YRGB. When you have it set to DaVinci YRGB, you're pretty much saying to DaVinci Resolve that you're going to do everything manually uh, in the color page to get your image from how it was shot to uh, delivery. Okay, so you have it set to DaVinci YRGB. Um, let's do DaVinci YRGB color manage. So I'm going to manage the color in the project setting. So this is color management. And then I'm going to uncheck this. And I'm going to go ahead and select, where are you? HDR DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. All right. And then we're going to put output color space at Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. I'm going to click Save. We have now set our output color space. But if we look at our clips, they are all still in log. So now we would have to go to each click, or each click, each clip right click and now we set our input color space on a clip to clip basis you know what i mean so input color space for these clips is an re re log c4 now as you can see it's converted it to rec 709 which is what you want to be at when you go to do your color correction and your uh, look implementation um, and then as you can see we can go to this clip right click go to input color space re re log c4 this one, input color space, RE, RE log C4, okay? So now those are all ready to grade. And then if we go here, we have to do the same thing with the other camera. So make sure you know what input color space to put on each camera. This is shot in a Panasonic. So I'm gonna go to input color space, Panasonic, Panasonic V gamut. Right click on this one, input color space, Panasonic V gamut, and there we go. All of these are now ready to grade. Now, let's go ahead and reset all those. We're going to go the other route, which is the color space transform route. So let's go to our settings. And now we're going to do this all ourselves. We're not gonna have DaVinci manage our color. Now we're gonna wanna set it to DaVinci YRGB and then go ahead and click save. And as you can see, all our clips are back to log, right? Okay, so uh, what you're gonna do is we're gonna create a sandwich, all right? And to do that, we're gonna add a color space transform to this node, create another node, drag it to the end, and add a color space transform, okay? Now we're gonna put our input color space. What this is coming into DaVinci as. It's coming into DaVinci as RE wide gamut 4 and RE log C4. And then we're gonna output it to where you at, where you at, DaVinci Wide Gamut, and then Output Gamma, DaVinci Intermediate. Now let's go to the end of the node tree. Let's go to the end, let's jump to the end. And we have to input these again. But this time, since we put our output as DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate here, we are gonna set our input as DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate here. And we want it to go out Typically what people are going to want it to go out as is your output color space is going to be Rec 709 and your output gamma is going to be gamma 2.4 and then you're going to do all your grading in between. So we're going to put CST and label these as color space transform so you know. So we could technically do it with one color space transform node at the end of the node tree but this creates a larger color space for us to work with if we create a little sandwich. And then you would pretty much copy and paste that onto all of these. 
let's go ahead and delete the first color space transform. Because this end color space transform is going to be the same no matter what. It's always going to be input uh, color space, DaVinci wide gamma, input gamma, DaVinci intermediate, and output color space, output gamma. It's always going to be the same. All right, so we have our node tree set up with our CST at the end, right? Okay, and let's just say you had 50 clips with RE footage on them, right? I only have three, but let's say you're working with a lot. All right, you can go ahead and right click, grab the still from here, and then go ahead and highlight all your other clips with the same footage, and then middle mouse click on the still, and then you'll see it'll kind of paste all of them on the other clips. So now they're all the same. So now what you wanna do is create a group, all right? So highlight all of these, and like I said, pretend I have like 50 RE clips. Highlight all of them, right click, and go ahead and add into a new group, and we'll call it RE, the group. Hit okay, all right, so we created our group. Now go to clip, go to group pre-clip, all right? And now add your color space transform. Go ahead and put in what your camera is inputting at, your input color space. Mine, mine is the RE wide gamut 4, uh, RE log C. And then go ahead and put it outputting as DaVinci wide gamut and DaVinci intermediate. And now all our clips are good to go and ready to grade. So you just come in and you grade all the clips. So you see we have my first clip. All right, I can just start to grade. And now we have a good starting point for all of our clips. We're gonna be working as accurate and precise as we can, guys. You guys wanna do that, right? Come on, who doesn't wanna do that? And of course, we still have, you still have your other clips too uh, that weren't affected by anything you did because we're doing everything ourselves. We're not setting up our color management and our color management settings. So we have to go to our individual groups of cameras and set everything up ourselves. So let's do the same thing here and go ahead and create your node tree of desire. And for the last one, we're gonna put a color space transform. We're gonna put a uh, DaVinci wide gamut for the input color space and the input gamma will be DaVinci intermediate. And for our output, we're always gonna go ahead and output it um, to Rec 709 for the output color space and uh, gamma 2.4 for the output gamma. Um, that's typically what you're gonna put your output as. Of course, there's many combinations. <sighs> it gets kind of crazy. It looks a little goofy right now. I'm gonna grab this still, go to all your other clips with that camera, highlight them, and then you can go ahead and middle mouse click. You could click your scroll wheel, uh, and then go ahead and click on it, and it'll paste it on there, like I said. And now what you're gonna wanna do is Hold shift, then click all of your clips with the same camera. Right click and then add these to a new group. And we're gonna call this yep, Panasonic Log. Go ahead and click OK. And we're gonna go to clip up here, go to group pre-clip. And as you can see, we have our clip. Let's go ahead and add our color space transform to this. And now this is gonna be obviously affecting everything in the group. And our input color space, uh, this is on Panasonic. So I'm gonna go Panasonic V gamut. And then we're gonna go for our input gamma, Panasonic V-Log. And then we're gonna go ahead and transfer all this into DaVinci, the DaVinci Wide Gamma and DaVinci Intermediate. And now as you can see, both of them are ready to grade. We're gonna go up here and go back to clip. And now we can go in our node tree and go ahead and get grading both of these. My goodness, it gets a little weird, I know. I hope I explained it to where it made sense to you. So there you guys go. Those are uh, color space transform and color management basics. Remember, this isn't all set in stone. The time you save kind of depends on if all your footage in your timeline is from one camera or two cameras or mixed with raw, uh, mixed with log. Like and subscribe for weekly DaVinci Resolve videos. Go ahead and comment your thoughts and any further questions you have, I'll answer them pretty quick. And guys, we're done. You learned a little bit today. Anyway, I will see you in the next one.